I spent the last few weeks creating an AI-generated trailer for Jules Verne's classic novel Journey to the Center of the Earth. And since I'm using dozens of different AI tools and techniques to create this, I thought it would be a good idea to create separate videos for all the main workflows. So today I want to focus mainly on AI-generated characters and animation. The center of the Earth? That's impossible. This workflow is going to be very extensive and you might not follow it step by step, but the different techniques are kind of modular, so maybe there is something in there for you that you can incorporate into your own workflows. First of all, I needed my characters. And since they are well described in the book, I used these descriptions combining them with summaries generated by ChatGPT. For generating the images out of these prompts, I used Midjourney because it's still my favorite image generator. But of course you can use any other image generator like for example Stable Diffusion. It really doesn't matter which one we use as long as we can create a symmetrical front view of the character with the arms outstretched in what is called a T-pose or A-pose depending on the angle of the arms. In Stable Diffusion, I would use ControlNet for this. In Midjourney, make sure to include keywords like T-Pose, Symmetrical, Full Body, Spread Arms, Front View, and it should work. But if your character still comes out in other poses, try using an image prompt. For this, I searched for an image of a character in a T-Pose and I found this 3D model by Ben Houston. And I just used a screenshot that I then uploaded into Discord. Feel free to screenshot it as well. I then copy the URL and edit it into my prompt and use the image weight parameter to adjust the strength of the influence of the image. I try to keep it as low as possible because I only want the pose and not like the color so I don't generate like creepy mannequins. I usually use image weight 0.2 as a starting point and as you can see this works really well. If there are still a cut off parts of your character you can use Midjourney's new panning tool to bring them into the picture. But later I want to also create detailed facial animation of this character and this image isn't quite high resolution enough for that. So again I just took a screenshot of just the character's face and copied it into Discord using the link as an image prompt. I also adapted the prompt to generate a character's face and increased the image weight a little bit and I quickly found something that I was happy with. Creating the base 3D model is super easy. I used Icon, an AI tool that can create 3D models of clothed people from just a single image. And you can just go to their hugging face space that I'll link below and upload the image of your character. Choose Icon and after a few seconds you'll have your 3D character and some fancy animations showing the normals and pose and stuff. Super cool. I imported the 3D model into Blender but the colors were missing. So to bring them back I just went to the front view and selected all the vertices. I then opened the UV editing workspace, clicked on UV, project from view, applied a new shader with my image texture loaded in and adjusted the UVs to fit the image and asked myself two questions. Why does my character kind of look like teenage Voldemort and why does he also have a Voldemort face stuck to the back of his head? The first question I can't answer, the second one is quite easy to fix. Simply select all the vertices on the back of the character that you want to generate a new texture for and then move these UVs to the side can go to UV, export UV layout and use this guide to create a new backside for your character in your favorite image editor. I tried doing it with the generator fill in Photoshop but that didn't really work so I thought hey I just can use that mid-journey trick again. So I uploaded the character as an image, set the image weight to a really low value and ask for a backside of my character. In Blender I changed the file and the shader to my new image, but as you can see I still had some ugly seams on the side of my character. I used the grab tool to just kind of push all the UVs over the texture, make sure that they are covered by it. And I also used the blur and texture draw tool in the texture painting tab to kind of blur everything together a bit more. But you really don't have to be super clean here and you see later why. Now that I had my 3D character, I still needed to make him talk so that I know what kind of animation to look for and how to set up the shot. So I headed over to Eleven Labs and looked for some fitting voices for my characters. I then put in all the lines and played around with the settings until I found something that I liked. Uncle, are you sure this is safe? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You've probably seen a lot of these viral videos that use AI talking heads and most people use tools like Heijin or DID to create those. I also used DID in an older video and it's a lot of fun to bring your characters to life so easily right in your browser. The problem is they are often oriented towards businesses and they can get quite expensive. So instead I wanted to try out a free tool called SadTalker. And you can use it on their hugging face space without having to install anything. 
They also have a version that works with automatic 11.11, which is the one that I'm going to use. And you can just find it in extensions and install it from there. Just go to the Sad Talker tab, put in your close-up image of the generated face. Under Driving Methods, put in your audio. Play around with the expression style. I like to put it a bit higher than 1 to just make the facial animation a bit more pronounced. You can use the higher resolution model if you have a strong computer. I can only work with a 256, otherwise it will crash. Select Still Mode, since we don't want any additional head movement. Pre-process Full. If needed, you can activate GFP GAN as Face Enhance, and it will try to make your face look more realistic, but it also changes the style a little bit. I then opened my texture of the three character in After Effects, but you can also do it in DaVinci Resolve if you don't have the Adobe Creative Cloud, and then I imported the Sad Talker video. I roughly masked out the character's face and put it in the right position. And then I had an animated texture with facial animation, which I exported as a PNG sequence with some additional frames in the beginning and end. I then went back to Blender and moved the character up so that the feet were sitting right above the ground plane. I then exported him as an OBJ and uploaded him to Adobe Mixamo, a library of hundreds of motion captured animations. Using their advanced rigging algorithm, I was able to create a rig for my character in seconds. I searched for animations that kind of fit the voice pattern of my character and downloaded it. I imported that FBX file into a new Blender scene and I created a new shader into which I loaded my image sequence with the facial animation. Make sure to enter the number of images and enable auto refresh. And there it was. We have an animated character with facial animation. If the animation doesn't fit perfectly, you can go into the dope sheet and move the keys around until it fits. The great thing about this workflow is that the animation is not baked into the character, so you can still go into pose mode and change all the aspects of the animation. And I think this could be a great start into the world of 3D animation if you've never done it before, because you already have such a strong foundation to work with. Now it's time to create a camera, add some lights into the scene, and of course add a background. The easiest way is just to use a mid-journey image imported as a 2D image plane, but if you want to be a bit more advanced, I recommend you check out my video on generating 3D models out of AI images. Or the one where I'll show you how to generate full 360 degree AI sets for your characters. I'll also put some beginner tutorials into the video description that will quickly get you up to speed with all the Blender basics you'll need for this workflow. Finally, export your image sequence, and if you're a fan of old video game aesthetics, congratulations, you are done, run, you still have a chance! But yeah, I was not really happy with the result, and I quickly wanted to try out a few other AI tools to enhance this result, which turned into weeks of long nights and torturing my poor RTX 2070 graphics card. But before we go down this rabbit hole, this is probably a good time to tell you that I have a Patreon now. Producing these videos alongside my full-time work as a visual effects artist can be quite the challenge, as they always take hundreds of hours to create, and you will soon learn exactly why. And I would like to be able to take more time to make even more and better videos. In return for your support, you'll be credited at the end of all my new videos, and can get access to exclusive behind-the-scenes content, sample files, and handy workflow sheets for all my new videos. Check it out under the link in the description, and thank you very much for your support. Now back to the video. You've probably seen all these amazing but yeah, kind of creepy AI generated videos and the first tool to be able to create them was Runways Gen 2. But before there was text to video there was Gen 1, a tool that lets you apply the style of an image to another video. And I tried that with my 3D rendering and the results were a bit creepy but also pretty promising. But then I had an idea. What if I used one of the original images as the style input for the video itself? So I uploaded a frame from the PNG sequence and in the advanced settings I reduced the structural consistency and the style weight. And I was honestly blown away by the first test. It created a very unique style that was still pretty close to the original image, it cleaned up a lot of the parts that I didn't like about the original image, and it even added a really cool facial movement that completely fit the tone of the voice. Look at this. The center of the earth? That's impossible. The only problem was that the lip sync in the beginning was completely lost, but I was very sure that this could be fixed easily by tweaking the settings. But oh boy was I wrong. Turns out that I just got really lucky with my first test. I spent hours and a lot of money, because you also have to pay for credits to generate videos for this tool, to find the perfect settings. But even with a fixed seat, the results were just too random and the lip sync never really got any more precise. And for other characters, especially this one with glasses, the old professor, the face came out really broken. 
but this is actually quite easy to fix. Just convert your video into a PNG sequence and go to your automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion web UI. Under the Extras tab, you can use the GFP GAN and or Code Deformer, both are tools that are meant to fix those broken AI faces, and this worked way better than I thought. It actually made those clips watchable again, and I was quite happy with the result, but the lip sync was still not quite there. So after I did this face fixing pass uh, with GFP GAN, I uploaded the clip to the wave to lip Google Collab Notebook. And it's a tool that will generate really convincing lip sync for videos based on any talking audio. And this worked really well. The lip movement looked fantastic. But now the quality was deep fried. So again, I went to the Extras tab in the Stable Diffusion Web UI, this time using not only GFP GAN, but also the only upscaler that didn't crash or took hours on my poor 8 GB graphics card. And now the final video looks like this. Not if we follow his clues. Still a bit too blurry and flickery for my taste, but at least the lip sync was better. To make the results even better, I wanted to try a different version of this workflow. I took the 3D rendering and transformed it with Gen 1. I then uploaded this clip to the wave to lip Google Collab and generated new mouth movements. To keep the original quality, I didn't upscale the image this time, but instead used the Roto Brush tool in After Effects to isolate only the mouth and I put it back on the Gen 1 footage. Then I used a combination of GFP GAN and Code Deformer to correct the face and that's how I ended up with this shot. The center of the earth? That's impossible. The center of the earth? That's impossible. I really didn't expect such a good result from this workflow test, especially if you take a look at the underlying Blender rendering. The big disadvantage of this workflow is that Runway Gen 1 is not free and it would be very expensive to realize a whole movie this way. So I wanted to try out a variation of this workflow that is completely free. Deforum is a tool probably best known now for making trippy, viral AI videos like this one by Max Neural, but you can also use it to create consistent new styles for your videos. Let me show you what I mean. And feel free to copy my settings here as a starting point, they have served me very well. So I'm using LMS Keras as my sampler and I left the step at 25. The width and height of my final image are determined pretty much by the strength of my graphics card. I can't really go higher than this. For seed I just put in 10 because I want a static seed, I don't want a changing number. And under batch name you can name the folder that Stable Diffusion will render all your images to. And you can also activate restore faces down here again if your faces come out looking kind of broken. Under keyframes choose video input, you can leave the strength as it is. If you want more consistent video, you can go a bit higher. You can leave the CFG where it is, but also feel free to play around with this value as it changes your outcome a lot. And under seed, put in fixed because we don't want the seed to change. The rest you can leave as it is. And then under prompts, this is really important. I tried to keep it as short as possible and describe what I wanted to see in the final image. So I pretty much described what was already in the picture and then as a negative prompt what I didn't want. And then under init, go to video init and put your video path here. And now it's important that you have control net for stable diffusion installed. I usually use two models. I combine the depth layers plus plus with a canny left pretty much at the standard settings. But using just a canny usually works pretty well as well. And it is a lot faster. But feel free to play around here. Just don't forget to put the image path down here um, again. And the rest you can leave as it is. And you can hit generate. Also, really important, think about the model that you're going to use. I'm using Cyber Realistic here because it was pretty faithful to the original rendering. But if you want a more stylized image, you can use anime models. You can use, for example, this Disney Pixar model. It's a lot of fun to try out these models as they have a big impact on your final image. So as a result, you will get an image sequence that looks something like this. Pretty consistent, but still flickering a lot. But that can easily be fixed in DaVinci Resolve. Import your image sequence, go to the Fusion tab and add a set of deflicker nodes set to Fluorolight. I also like to add a repair image node, a node that tries to smooth out the motion in the image based on the optical flow of the pixels. This makes the video a little blurrier, but also much smoother. The center of the earth? That's impossible. The center of the earth? That's impossible. The center of the earth? That's impossible. Not if we follow his clues. Come on, Axel, we have to go to Iceland. Not if we follow his clues. Come on, Axel, we have to go to Iceland. Not if we follow his clues. Come on, Axel, we have to go to Iceland. I really enjoy playing around with both of these workflows and I think they both have their pros and cons. For example, I love the extra facial movements of Gen 1, but I also like the closeness to the original image and the flexibility and directability of the forum. 
For example, in this scene, the original rendering doesn't have a mustache in it. I only added that in the prompt because I thought it looked cool. In the end though, it was the price that made me have to use the deforum workflow for the rest of the project. Gen 1 is just too expensive right now. I know what we've created today can't compete with Pixar or anything, but as I mentioned in a previous video of mine, I think this is the future of rendering or 3D animation in general. You'll have a sort of 3D version of ControlNet and the heavy lifting of bringing your animation to life will be done by a layer of generative AI that not only renders your shot, but also adds additional layers of motion controlled by text prompts. And I think the character animations that we created today are a good proof of concept for that. But let me know what you think. I hope you got something out of this video and even if it's just parts of the workflow or general inspiration for your project. And as always, if you're using any of the techniques and workflows that I've shown today, please send me a link or tag me in your work. I always love to see what you come up with. See you next time.